Welcome to another Tactical Fly Fisher fly tying tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be tying for you the front end loader caddis. And this caddis is a dry fly that I came up with back during the uh, practice for the 2013 World Fly Fishing Championships while we were in Norway. And uh, basically we had some fish that were rising there and they wanted some flush floating dry flies but I also wanted to be able to hold up a dropper. So this was the, the uh, solution to that problem and it's basically become my most effective caddis dry that I turn to any time that I want it to float higher in some or just float well in some broken water or hold up a dropper. We'll get right to it. This is a Guru LWG hook. It's a little heavy uh, for most dry flies but uh, I really like a slightly heavier wire uh, for this dry fly in case I come into some bigger fish, but you can easily tie it on a finer wire dry fly, especially if you need to hold up uh, a heavier dropper and you don't want the innate uh, weight of the dry fly hook itself to pull down the fly. Just got some ADOT uh, Rusty Dunn thread here from Uni. I've laid down that thread base across the hook and I'm starting with some number seven Globrite floss and I'm just going to cut a big piece off here and match up three separate lengths of it to form it into uh, a tag just like I did on the blowtorch nymph if you've watched that video. So I've uh, just laid it down at the front Pulled it back till the ends are even so I don't have to trim them. And then I'm just going to cut off a tiny little tuft here. You don't want it very long. Now I'm going to wrap up. And I'm going to add two things at this point. One would be some 5X tippet. Just a short three or four inch length. You can make it a little longer if you're going to tie several of these at the same time. Wrap that back to the tag. And do the same thing again with some micro flashaboo. Uh, this happens to be pearl. You could also use opal. And then we're gonna. We, I put the tippet on the far side of the hook. Uh, the tinsel I am, or the flashaboo I'm tying on the near side of the hook. The side of the hook that's closest to me. And I'm gonna lash that back on that side. Next, I have some calabatus. Super fine dubbing. Obviously, this isn't a fly that's supposed to be representing a calabatus, but the calabatus is a nice tan color that seems to go really well with this dry fly. I also happen to tie this dry fly in purple with a purple ice dub for the body, and that's been really good whenever fish are wanting an attractor style pattern, especially in the fall for me. And I'm dubbing a nice thin layer on the body here. You can see this nice thin noodle that I've got there of dubbing. Always better to add a little thin dubbing at a time, especially on a tight woven dry fly body than it is to add a nice thick rope that uh, will bulk your fly up too much at a time. You can create a better taper with that fine amount of dubbing and just keep, the, keep that fly thin. So I'm going to stop with about at least a third of the hook shank, maybe a slight bit less, but I don't want to uh, crowd the eye of this fly and it's going to take quite a bit of space to put that wing and the hackle in. So I'm going to stop the dubbing about right there and hopefully that's enough. It may have been a little too much. After I've wrapped that dubbing, I'm going to wrap the pearl tinsel here and it's going to go counterclockwise if you're looking at the front of the hook. Basically it goes uh, away from you going under the body and then back towards you coming over the top and I'll just make some nice evenly spaced wraps there it looks like I'm gonna get about four before I hit the end of the body and go ahead and tie that down and then counter rib that tinsel to strengthen it with that 5x tippet
Now I have a nice uh, hank or nice patch of elk hair here and I'm going to cut off quite a bit. I like to have quite a bit on here so that I can float this fly in some broken water especially since it doesn't have hackle that's protruding down or a whole bunch of poly to help with flotation. So I'm going to get a pretty good chunk. You can see that looks like a lot for that fly I know but by the time I've cleaned out the base and gotten all the under fur and fibers out and the shorter fibers I end up with about that much and that may be just a bit much. I'll pull out a few of those fibers. Now I've got a hair stacker here so I'm gonna go ahead and chuck those fibers in it and now those tips are nice and even. I grab them out with my left hand and then transfer to my right hand and measure and I want it to go just a little bit past that tag. Now this is an important part. I'm gonna cover that hook with a whole bunch more thread because I want a big wide base to tie this uh, hair down so that it doesn't spin around the hook. There's nothing more frustrating with this fly than to have your hair spin and then uh, you'll have to start over with that part so that it doesn't ride on its side. Then I'm going to go ahead and just give it a quick little dab of some Zappa Gap here. Just also help strengthen and, uh, that bit and keep the hair from rolling. So I'm back here. I want it just a little bit longer than that tag. Transfer it to my left hand. Then I wrap around all that elk hair. I haven't gone around the hook yet. This is important too. So I wrap around the elk, the uh, pinch of elk hair and that that's a full circumference around it then I go over the top of it again and around the hook so I uh, that that'll hold the elk hair together into in one clump and keep it from rolling or spreading around the hook uh, you want it to ride just on top so that you get that flush bottom that shows uh, right through the surface film and and uh, doesn't protrude downward and, and make the fly even look even bulk bulkier. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap through a few of those fibers to really try and hold <clears throat> that elk hair down. Don't worry about getting the entire clump under those thread wraps. You don't need to. And I'm just going to rotate the vise around and trim it off a little bit at a time. Once you get most of the long stuff, out of the way then you can have a better view and do some more micro trimming to get the body as flush as you can get it. And you do want that hair as short as can be because you still gotta add some more materials here and it'll get nice and bulky if you don't trim it down. I'm gonna wrap over the base of that really quickly and you can see that elk hair between that thicker uh, body of thread, the base of thread, and then also that uh, roll wrap, that full wrap around the elk hair with the, the glue. It's really stayed on top exactly how you want it and not rolling around the side. Okay, after adding uh, the elk hair, I'm gonna go ahead and add some uh, pink parapost to this fly as just a little uh, sight indicator for you to see the fly and whenever the lighting conditions are bad. Also, it's gonna add just a little bit of flotation that the fly wouldn't have without it. So I have taken a, uh, a strand or a clump of, of parapost that comes off the, out of the package and I've split it in half. So you don't want that full clump or else it's gonna to be too much. And what I'm gonna do here so that I don't get extra bulk up front, I'm gonna tie this over the front like this with just one or two wraps to lock it down like that then I'm going to take that front piece and fold it back and just make a wrap or two over the top of that and that'll lock that indicator material down really well but then I don't have to uh, pull it down and tie it over the front and make that front more bulky yet again so then I'm gonna pull the whole clump up and trim I want it just a little bit shorter than that I'll, I'll cut it off at an angle there that's fine. 
And now you've got just a, a bit of a, a siding post there for you. All right, so the next thing we're gonna add is some 5X. You can do 6X as well, uh, and it actually ties better with 6X, but I find that the 5X is a little more durable and the, the uh, thread doesn't tend to fall apart, or the hackle doesn't tend to come off the fly after a few fish with uh, 5X the way that it does with 6X. So I've formed a loop here, kind of hard to see on the, the camera I'm sure but I formed a loop in my fingers and I've got maybe oh probably five inches of tippet here and I'm I'm going to tie in this loop the reverse of how it's going to end up being uh, the tags facing back and the loop facing out over the front of the fly and I'm gonna pinch those, uh, the wings out of the way and then do a pinch wrap around the material here and lock it up with an upward wrap there. And then uh, I'll slide that tip it down so you don't really have to trim it off. Now the important part here is I fold the loop back and tie it down again. Uh, back when I didn't, when I <laughs> tied this fly the first few times and didn't fold that tip it back, um, it would basically just come out really easily during the, the next step and that drives you nuts. Alright, now I've got a, uh, a feather from a Whiting's 100 pack here. This is a size 12 hook, so I'm going with a size 12 hackle feather. And I've stripped off the base of the feather there, just the first few fibers, so that all I have is the quill. And I'm going to tie that in right up against that tippet. Next, I'm going to dub the front of the body here. Just adding some more Calabatus Superfine. And I want as thin a dubbing noodle as I can possibly get here because I've already got quite a bit of bulk. I want that front end to get super big. It's already a little bit bigger than I like. So I'm barely covering the uh, butts of the deer hair and the thread. Just enough to get a tiny bit of dubbing over the top. So yeah, uh, the only way you can get that is if you just break off the absolute most minuscule bits of dubbing like that at a time and then wrap them on the thread. Okay, now the next step, I like to chuck in a, a whip finish here. That way while I'm wrapping the, the hackle on the, the tippet here, my thread doesn't slide off the front and take my dubbing with it. And after that, I grab the loop of thread with my index finger here. So I'm just inserting my right index finger into the loop. I lift that up and I take it out forward in front of the fly and you want it at a really shallow angle here and what that's going to do is allow you to wrap around it but keep it away from this wing back here and not get the wing fibers trapped as much and as i'm wrapping it's going away from me as i go under the loop and coming back towards me as i go over the top and i'm just going to wrap up that loop a little bit and the other reason to have it at a shallow angle, you're gonna actually measure how far that hackle goes so that it doesn't go past the front of the eye. So about to there is, a, is as far as I can take it. Now I wrap back down. And you want a lot of hackle in there, you want it to be dense because that's gonna help keep that front of the fly from breaking through the surface film as, the, as it's floating and hold up that dropper better. If you've got a you can't see it in the camera here, but I just, if you've got a longer saddle feather like this and you can put it in a material clip towards the back of the fly, that's a really handy thing. And the next step, I just take my fingers here and I really stroke those fibers out of the way, try and get them all facing back if possible. Then I pinch and hold on to that and I will use another pinch wrap here where I lift the thread up, put it in between those fingers come around the hook and back up, show you that there, back up and then I will cinch it 
and you'll see that as I pull this loop here, all of a sudden that hackle comes over the front of the fly and flays out and it uh, really forms a nice full coverage of hackle there that you're not going to get just by wrapping it up the shank. It also uh, is above the bottom of the fly so the, the bottom is flush and presents a nice profile to the fish. Okay, so now I'm just gonna stroke those fibers out of the way again, along with that tippet, and wrap back over that tippet to make sure it locks down so it doesn't pull out later. And then just go ahead and make a whip finish here. And I will do what I normally like to do and chuck a little bit of super glue here. And do one more whip finish. And I'm almost done. And if you get the thread down over the eye a little bit, since this fly is fairly easy to crowd the eye. And just use your thumbnail and your index finger to push it out of the way. You can usually get it to travel back. Okay, so now you gotta cut off the excess of this tippet. You wanna pull it back forward and slide your scissors down it right there so that it doesn't catch the fibers. And then snip. And then I'll just come in, uh, rotate the, the fly so that I've got easy access to the hackle and I don't snip when I come in to cut the hackle, I normally just jab at it so I avoid cutting any fibers and that snips it right off without having to close your scissors and preserves all those hackle fibers in there. So there you go, there's the finished hackle stacker or front end loader caddis as I like to call it. <clears throat> uh, it's got that nice flush profile on the bottom but it'll still hold up a dropper well catch you some pickier fish, and all around, it's been uh, my favorite go-to caddis in broken water for dry dropper fishing. If you like what you see here on this tutorial, please uh, like or subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Devin Olson, and as well uh, at uh, on Instagram at uh, Tactical Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching this video, and uh, happy tying.